Welcome to episode 25 of Wayward Writers. We're so glad to have you with us. We're going to be talking about the agent call today. Exciting stuff. We're at episode 25. Thank you all for sticking with us. We've had so much fun on this adventure with you. And what a way to kind of celebrate that by the infamous agent call. So yes. I think all three of us have been there. So what do we think? <laughs> I, th I think it's probably one of the most important calls of your career, honestly. Not, not to scare everybody to death, but yeah, it is. <laughs> but yeah. So we're, let's, let's just talk about it. What your critique partner comes to you and says, okay, I've got, I've got it. I've got the agent call. What's our best advice to give to our critique partner um, for what they need to have ready to go during at that critical call or zoom or however you do this? Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, the agent call is obviously something that the agent initiates asking for a call with you. Please don't ask the agent for a phone call. <laughs> that's not how that works. At least that's not how it should work well, right? Oh, so, come but, on, Nikki. <laughs> so the so agent, that's not how it works? Come the on. agent wants to discuss your manuscript. Hey, let's get on a phone call. So, yeah. So, of course, celebrate that before you do anything. That's huge to be asked to have a phone call. Um and then I think it's like, okay, critique partner, time to get to work in preparing for that call. Obviously, your yeah. first impression was your query um, in your writing, but that's not everything. And I think that call, right, is where you see if you mesh with that person, um, both on a professional level and personally. Yeah, and it may be the first time that you've really talked to that person. You may have been fortunate enough to get to meet them in person at an event, but if you haven't, this may be your first personal interaction with them. It is a little nerve-wracking, but I find it's helpful if you've got some idea of what you want to ask and what you need to ask. One of the big things for me is whether the style of agenting that we're going to have. There are agents that are editorial, there are agents that are totally hands-off, and there are agents that are somewhere in the middle that may you know, give you some editorial. So I wanna know is what is your agenting style? And so that's one of the first questions I have. Yeah. Nikki, what are the questions do you have? Well, also are they a, career agent or is this for this project you know am i mm -hmm. after this project's sold am i back in the query trenches again or you know yes. are we locking arms for a career which that goes back to your research and that hopefully you're having a call with an agent and you already know that they want to rep what you write, if that's multiple mm -hmm. genres or formats. These are good things to know before you go in, before even really your querying, because it saves everyone time and it leaves the emotions out of it. Because sometimes I think we get so excited about the possibility of signing with an agent that we might forget that we have as much skin in the game as that agent does. And we don't want to leave out projects we want to work on if they just don't represent it, which is okay, but all good information to know. Yeah, I do think you can do your research ahead of time, but I think things change in agents' lives too. And maybe Heather, you can attest to that, that maybe you are usually a career rep person, but you have something that you are passionate about a project and you're willing to work with this person on that project. Or Maybe you've been editorial, you may be switching that up some. I mean, I think things can change. So I would always ask the agent where they are right now and where they are with you. Okay. What do you think, Heather? Yeah, I definitely think that's a good idea. When I first started agenting, I had a wish list and that kind of filled up, right? Like mm -hmm. I got a lot of the stuff that I wanted then and then as an agent, you can't really represent like a whole bunch of the same stuff. Otherwise you're 
putting it all in the same places and you end up not being able to really sell it or sub it at the same time. And so you have to end up diversifying a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so I think it is good to ask the agent on the call, do you have any clients with manuscripts in the same genre and age categories as me? And what, and how many of those do you have? Because I feel like a lot of times people ask agents, how many clients do you have? Mm -hmm. And do you think you can take on more clients? Well, they wouldn't be offering to you if they didn't think they could take on more clients. Right. But what you want to know is how many other clients do they have, say, that are YA fantasy clients? And because re in reality, that's your competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As much as you don't want to think about it like that, your agent siblings are your kind of closest competition because your agent has to put all of you on sub at the same places. And there are rules that limit how many things we can put in certain places. And you don't want to be competing as an agent. You don't want to be setting your clients against one another because you want to sell both of those books. Yeah. And absolutely like said, on the flip side of that, you want to make sure one that you're not competing with your agent siblings, but also that your agent has, experience selling the genre yes. and age group you do. So if you're the only one that writes that, although that can be very good, I would just suggest you also see what the track record is, whether with that agent or the agency that they're with, like is, do they know that agent or agency in that genre and format? I think that's also important as well. It is. You sure. want it. You want to make sure that that if your the agent doesn't have experience in your genre, and maybe they want to branch out into it, at least they have someone in their agency that's going to be able to support them in branching out into that. And it gets really complicated. You don't think about all of these crazy mm -hmm. things. Um, you just want an agent. Um, right. But I think in order for it to be successful, and, and we've had the, we've talked about breaking up. Breaking up is hard to do, and so we want to make it so as successful as we can so we don't have to do the breaking up is, is hard to do. Um, along, At the same time, I just, yeah. I want to insert one thing here. I had never sold an adult cookbook before, and I did my research, and I helped my client write their proposal, and I sold that in seven days. Yeah. So to me, what matters even more than that is how passionate is the agent about your stuff? And, you know, you need to ask them those specific questions. Like when they're offering to you, have they done their research? Have they looked at who is going to be a good editor for this? Do they know the market? Do they know what they're talking about when you have to write a proposal for something and it's nonfiction? I feel like there are ways to mitigate because every agent has to start out somewhere with no Absolutely. track record. And especially me, I was bringing Storm into the middle grade and YA space. They didn't have almost any of those. And so it was definitely hard for me in the beginning because there were so many people who were like, oh, well, she's never sold any of that. Their agency has never sold any of that. Mm -hmm. But the very first YA fantasy I ever sold became a New York Times bestseller. So I think that there is room for that. You just have to make sure and ask the agent the questions, the right questions, so that you are sure that they know what they're doing, even if they don't have a specific track record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nikki, you were kind of talking about that. You were talking about some of the questions that you have about how passionate the agent feels about yeah. your work or? Yes, a lot of times as the writer, as the author on the call, we feel like we have the most to prove. And I think in some ways that is true. I mean, let's be honest, like you should definitely not go into this call thinking that you're golden. Yes, a call means that an offer is being thought about, but that doesn't mean that that's how the call is going to end. Um, and, Absolutely. and you might not, you might not even want an offer by the end of the call. You know what I mean? And so it is a two way street, but I think that it is, you can be professional and honest and 
flat out ask the agent, why are you passionate about this manuscript? Would you consider representing me? And then stop talking. Ask a question, let them think, and then let them answer. And, you know, it's, a, it's like an interview for both of you. And I don't think there, that there's anything wrong with asking those questions because you want to know now before you sign anything. Um, both of you do. I just think a lot of it, a lot of it is about pre-planning on your thoughts and some things are going to take you completely surprised and you might think you're prepared for all the questions and then one will get thrown at you that you don't know right away. And that's okay. And it's okay to think about that and to answer honestly, but professionally. Some of the things that you might want to have prepped ahead of time as from the author's end is any other projects that you might be working on too. Um, Asking if they're, hopefully you're talking to someone who's going to want to rep you for your career. And so some of those questions, you want to have succinct pitch ready for any other projects that you have. You can have it written out to help you. Mm -hmm. Another thing that you may want to talk to them about is if what if you were working on something in a d- totally different genre than you're in right now? It's a good discussion to have whether the agent wants to rep in that other genre or if it's something that you might need to find a second agent for. I mean, those are all some things that you need to consider and it's fair for your agent to, if they don't re- rep adult nonfiction, then they're probably not going to take your adult nonfiction. So those are all questions that I think we need to be prepared to ask. And you may get a negative answer on it and that's okay. You need to know, you need to know what's going on. It's better to know. It's better to know everything because the thing is that it's likely that you'll get multiple offers or multiple calls at least Mm -hmm. where you're talking to different agents and I think it's really important to, to be honest with yourself and with your agent so that you're asking all those questions that you can possibly ask. Because to me, we need authors, right? Agents, we need authors and we fall in love with things and we want to represent them. And the reality is that only you know the vision of your manuscript right? You know your manuscript well enough to know where you want it to go. And if the agent doesn't have that same vision or isn't willing to at least get on the same page as you, you should, you should take a step back because that's probably why you write is, is, the meaning of this manuscript to you. And you don't want to have to compromise certain things. So before you decide, you should definitely know those things that you're willing to compromise and make sure that the agent isn't forcing you into a situation where you're going to compromise things that you don't want to, because we need authors. I think that's, that's what I really, really want authors to understand is that like you should hold all the cards. I know that's not always true. And agents don't, don't treat authors that way all the time. But I just feel like that authenticity that comes with you and your vision is what in the end is going to resonate with readers and sell books. And so you should not be afraid to stand your ground and really know your whys and know where you want to go and know the industry well enough that you know that the agent is the right one for you. I love that. Yeah, like we talked about preparing. Know, know your why. Why do you write? Why, mm-hmm. why did you write this manuscript? And when whether the agent asks you that or not, but some way you can work in, those are great visions. And not necessarily, yes, the answer matters, but it's also that you even thought about it. I mean, you can walk up to people that have been writing for decades and they don't know why they write. Um, because it changes. And... Why are you agency? Yeah. Like, what is your goal as an agent? I mean, this is, you are partners in your career and you really have to look at it like that. Like if you were to go on a date with mm-hmm. someone and 
there wasn't a jive, you might not go on a second date. And that's okay if it doesn't work out. Um, but know your why. Like Stephanie said, have your pitches ready. Um, whether it's a Zoom call or just a phone call, get dressed for success. Like, I don't know, I have this pair of boots <laughs> that like, I just feel like I can rule the world in. And I put them on. She didn't see me in the boots, but I felt more confident. And I felt myself. And have your resume. Yeah. What what have you done? And even if it's not much, you just, that's what control you can have is the preparation. You know, pitches, mm -hmm. um, you know, just have it all laid out. So if and when a question comes, you feel prepared. Um, you know, if there's something that you do, if there's a word, if you always say like or um, make yourself a note. It's a big call and you want it to go as well as you possibly can. And, and also have fun. No one wants to work with someone that's rigid and boring and because this as we all know is a long journey and it um, is. and i think it's great to ask about how agents deal with rejections like when we're on submission how do you communicate do you like to email do you like to text do you do you like to set up appointments for phone calls ask all those things what is your way that you like to communicate do you wait to give feedback after a couple weeks or after so many responses? I mean, these are all things that might seem silly, but whether you're on submission with an agent or not, you're still on submission, right? So you're, it always feels like you're refreshing your inbox and it's good just to know how, how are you all going to communicate or things like that. Think little things that after a while, just like in, a dating relationship can start to become problematic if you don't talk about it. And I think Nikki, all of that is really important because setting those clear expectations ahead of time for both of you mm -hmm. is important and being honest about what you need and, and what you expect too. I have a, a friend of mine, and this they've had she has a long term relationship with her agent, loves her and everything. And her she and her agent probably only communicate via email maybe two or three times a year. Um, I have other friends who get antsy if they haven't heard from their agent in two or three weeks. And, um, you know, there needs to be a balance that works for both you and the agent. So really checking to see what your agent's communication style is and being honest with them about whether that's going to work for you or not. And being honest with yourself. Again, if your agent is more hands-off and that's the style, then you either need to accept, okay, that is the style, or you need to think about whether that's the right place for you. Heather, what are some of the things that you think about on that call and that you want to have the authors know or consider? I think that for me, one of the things I'm trying to do during the call is I'm really just trying to get to know them and see if long term this is really going to work because that's what I want. I want to be a career agent. A lot of times I'll ask things like, how did they get to this point? How did they start writing? Or what was the inspiration for this particular book? What do they think that their strengths as a writer are? Mm -hmm. What do they think that their weaknesses are as a writer? I always ask about more books. Usually I let them ask most of the questions because I feel like that's important for an author to have their questions answered for sure, because they're the ones making the decision. I mean, yes, I can offer, but they're the ones that get to choose what agent is going to represent them. So getting to know the person and I notice what they're wearing. I notice if they're... See, she would have noticed your boots. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't know if I'd see the feet, okay, but <clears throat> you know, I do try and see how serious the author is taking the call and if they are putting forth 
a sense of professionalism. I really respect that. And then there's a lot of stuff also that I think is important to talk about, even if the author doesn't ask the question. Like I always try and go over the agency contract so that they know what they're getting into. I think that authors should always know what they're signing. And I always like to go over the direction of the manuscript that I've, that I'm going to offer on because I feel like if our visions don't align, then that the reality is your book could be a New York times bestseller or it could never get sold. And depending on the agent you go with could change that. Mm -hmm. If you go with me, maybe I wouldn't make you a New York Times bestseller, or maybe I would. And only you are going to be able to determine whether I'm the best agent for you. So obviously when I read something, I'm going to have like my own creative spin to put on it or my own creative additions or suggestions, right? Mm -hmm. Always a suggestion. That's the other thing is I think that agents should never give ultimatum. And I know that they do. I have heard so many authors who like, well, the agent told me that I have to respond by this date or the offer is no good anymore. Or they told me that I have to work on this manuscript because they don't want me to work on anything else right now. There are a lot of ultimatums that some agents give and there are agents who are I guess, successful enough that they can do that. But I just ethically don't agree with it. I feel like the author should be in control of the author's career, even though it's also my career. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of it is learning to trust. And it's a lot to put in one call, right? It is. It's a lot to put in one call. Like, am I going to be able to trust this person with my career? Right. And hopefully the answer is yes. I think you, I mean, I think you do get a sense and a vibe on the call. I mean, what are some things, Heather, that you would recommend authors do not ask or say (laughs) on the call? Good question. Mm. Well, I I don't want to call anybody out. Uh, (laughs) Sorry, maybe we don't answer it. Um, No, it's a valid question. You know, again, just remaining professional. But I also feel like if you if you have no intention of being professional with your agent, then you should just let it all fly because because that's what your relationship is going to be like, right? Like whatever intentionality you bring into the relationship and whatever you are going to be like maybe that's what you should do because then the agent will know the real you over time. You can't help but become friends with your clients. Sure. Like you you can't help it. I think there's a difference between being friends and still having healthy boundaries. Yes. Like, but I think, and being professional. Yeah. I mean, don't be emailing your agent at random times or consistently nagging or just because they're your agent and your partners, I mean, just like any relationship doesn't mean that they're going to be like, okay, you are wearing me out and this is not healthy. Like no one is benefiting from this. So, and same as in, that doesn't mean because you have an agent that you don't get your work critiqued. I mean, I guess we're kind of going off on a different call, but like, these are all things to consider. (laughs) Like, you yeah. still have to have a critique group and critique partners just because you're agented. Like when they say they're an editorial agent, that means they're going to help you with your polished manuscript. Not that they're your first read. And absolutely. I think well, and I, people forget that. And I, and I think part of that, maybe what Heather, I was interpreting it as you're saying is to be your authentic self um, yes. on, on the call. Um, don't go in either a stuffed shirt or representing yourself in some way that you're not going to be with that agent. If you know that you're somebody who needs to have someone hold your hand a lot, 
Um, you may not want to say that really out loud, but you might want to feel out your agent and say, how often will we be communicating? And be honest with yourself, yeah. whether that is enough for you or not. Um, yeah. It, it you need You need to be authentic. And I think you really need to do some self-reflection before you get on that phone call and have realistic expectations. Uh, being authentic and honest with yourself before you ever have that phone call and knowing um, and realizing what you need is not always going to be exactly what that agent can deliver, but the two of you can get, you can get as close as you can and work for both of you. And I think you have a, need to have a good picture of that in your head. Yeah. And I think we also have to remember, and I, it's hard, I mean, but you have one agent and your agent has X amount of clients. Yes. And, and that's a good question too. I mean, how so, many, yeah. How many clients do you have? Like just in general, you know what I mean? And specific, like Heather recommended to your genre age format, but you know, just mm -hmm. so you know, like, okay, my, you know, this agent has a lot of people that are responsible for Anything else, Heather, that you wish that the authors would, you've got some good suggestions for us authors. Any other things that you wish you, we would think, consider ahead of time? I think that while you are in the querying process is a really good time to kind of figure yourself out because being in the query trenches is a lot like being on submission. So you can tell if you put your stuff out there and you're waiting to hear back with queries and you feel really anxious. And if you're the kind of person who needs that no, mm -hmm. right, in writing, or if you're the kind of person who maybe you can put stuff on submission and not think about it. That's how I am. Mm -hmm. Like I can put stuff out there and I just don't even think about it. And my agent puts stuff out of my stuff and okay, I don't, I don't even think about it. I don't even look at rejections, but I know that I have some clients who, as soon as that rejection comes in, they want to know about it, right? They want to, to see what the person said and they want to analyze every word. So I think during the query process is the place where you can really get to know yourself about how you are going to respond and how you feel about being on submission and maybe think about the kind of communication that you would really appreciate. So I think that's a good kind of testing ground. The other thing I would say is you are getting to know your agent as soon as you, as soon as you start looking at who you should query. So I feel like anything you can find out about your agent or your possible agent or the person who's offering or the person you're even querying, that's really where it starts. You can glean a lot of information about the agent before you ever get on the call. And I think that could also help you hone the questions that you might have about that person. For instance, maybe the agent, you notice on Publishers Marketplace that they say that they represent all these different things, but they've only sold romance. Well, you're going to query them maybe because you think it's a good idea because they say that they want this stuff. When you get on the call, it would be a really good idea to ask them, why have you only sold romance? I mean, maybe don't phrase it like that, but <laughs> be real with them. For me, I sometimes wonder why I don't get asked is why is your list so eclectic? You know, why have you sold like this adult fantasy and this adult cookbook and this picture book and this nonfiction picture book. And I think that's a good thing to know about, right? Like me personally would be, I get bored. I, I get bored very easily. So anyway, all I'm saying with all of that is you're starting to get to know the agent the minute that you start to research them and query them look at their responses. How did they respond? Did they respond? If you nudged them while your query was with them, did they respond to your nudge? That's an indicator. Those are all indicators. And I'm not saying it's like hard and fast. It's, that's absolutely set in stone. But all of those ways that they communicate already with you or have communicated already or haven't communicated with you, those are all indicators too. Yeah. And so. 
And I think you can take that a step further by asking um, for some references of current clients and talking absolutely. To, you know, any any reputable agent is going to be more than happy to give you some names of people that you can email or call and talk to about their experience mm -hmm. with the agent. And then you can kind of get a, an idea of from somebody outside of the two of you as to how this is going to work. And um, I always think that's a. And not just the clients who sold. Yes, exactly. Like ask for clients who have not sold too. That's a great point. That's a good because point. those are the ones that are probably the best indicators of what kind of an agent the person is. So here's a frank question. You're on the call and during the call, you as an agent have decided that you are not going to be a good fit for this author. Or when the call goes well and you want to offer it, like how do you end the call in those scenarios? And with each scenario, what do you recommend the author then does the next steps? Okay. So let's say we're on a call and it's going really well. And I decide that I think we'd be a perfect match and I would love to represent them. Then I am going to say something to the effect of, I would like to officially offer you representation. And it depends if they have already talked to another agent, then I will already know that there's a deadline. If there isn't a deadline already set in place, then I will say, do you have a time frame that you're looking at for getting back to me about accepting my offer? If things don't go well and I, which they have, I have gotten on a few calls where I just knew it wasn't going to be a good fit for whatever reason. At the end, generally what I say is, I hate saying this because then if, if I get on the call, <laughs> if I get on the call and I say this, but anyway, oh, sorry. I mean, I the, the basic thing is, no, no, it, it's true. I mean, this is, this is, and this is the truth, which is why I, I don't hesitate to say it. But the reality is I just have to think about it longer. Mm -hmm. So I always thank them for meeting with me. And I tell them that I need some more time to think about it um, before I offer them representation and that I'd like to reread their other manuscripts and or their other pitches and just think about it. Maybe go back and do some looking at my lists because there are times when there have been times when I have loved the manuscript so much and I love the author. There was just this little part of me that was like, is this just too close to a, another client's manuscript? Mm -hmm. Cause sometimes I don't ask for more pitches before the call. Sometimes mm -hmm. usually I do, but sometimes I don't. And there have been times when I've gotten on the call and then there are other manuscripts, like they had like three other manuscripts that were very similar to another client. And that time I was like, I really need to go and just look over my lists again and make sure that these aren't going to be a conflict of interest. And so I'll say something like that. I need to think about it more for some other, for some reason. And then I do. And sometimes I go ahead and offer and sometimes I don't. And I give the reason. And at that point, the author, of course, if it's the first offer that the author has gotten, then before the call, you should have decided, okay, I'm going to take two weeks to make my decision or I'm going to take a month. I have had people who are like, you know what? this is the biggest decision of my career and I am going to take a month to make this decision. And if that's too long for you, then I guess you're not the right agent for me. Yep. Taking too long. I do feel can sometimes work against you because you're giving the agent a little too much time in which they don't feel pressed to read it. And it can kind of get away from you. You, like you lose momentum a little bit, mm -hmm. but I think two or three weeks is a really good time frame for you to take 
If it's picture books, like, you can take a little less time because you can read five picture books and you can read them three times in an hour. And so that's more manageable if you only have a week for picture books. But you need to have thought about that, how long you're going to take. Have your date set so that you're not scrambling on the call and tell them, this is when I'll get back to you by... And I would also super, super highly suggest that you set the date that the agent has to get back to you by, like all the other agents have to get back to you by the 21st, because you really have to make your decision on the 23rd. And that way you'll have all your calls done by the 21st. And then you'll have a couple of days, say, to really think about it to go over all your notes, to maybe even ask follow-up questions of the other agents. I've had that happen before where I was a super, super good fit for this one manuscript, but everything else that they were writing was, and I didn't really realize it, was this other genre that I don't really care for. And even though I was really sad to lose that author and that book, I did feel like they were making the right decision. And they told me like, you just said some things on the call that were this and this and this. And I really feel like this other agent was a lot more enthusiastic about all these other manuscripts, which is the whole like direction yes. my career is going right now. So she's coming back. Yeah. Give yourself a couple days to just think about it. Okay. Don't, don't be afraid to ask follow-up questions because as you have more calls, that agent, the next agent and the next agent, they might bring up things that you weren't thinking about mm -hmm. on the first call. And you want to be able to follow up with that other agent and see like what, you know, well, what is their answer going to be about this? I think all of those things are, are really helpful. I think a lot of times as authors, we're not, we're just so excited about the call. We're not thinking ahead to all of those kind of things uh, that we need to, to consider and so hopefully, yeah. I hope some of this has been helpful um, for anyone who's out there in the query trenches, if you're getting ready to get the call, or really, I hope before you um, get out there and get so deep in, you think about all of this, because you will eventually have to make those decisions. They're fun decisions to make, nerve-wracking decisions, but hopefully maybe we've given you some things to think about. Any um, other ideas we should maybe make sure our listeners know about? You should always ask for a contract. Ah, good. You should always ask for a copy of the contract that you're going to have to sign, and you should compare you should compare the different agency agreements from the offers that you get because, for instance, there are some agencies that take 30% of foreign rights and there are some that only take 25. There are some that require certain things that others don't. And so you really need to know what you're signing. And if you don't understand it, then you could sign, end up signing something that you regret. Oh, exactly. Yeah. I, one of the questions, yeah. I think I had forgotten about this, but I did not realize one time that the it wasn't really the agent's policy, but it was the agency policy that the agent could only submit one manuscript at a time for each mm -hmm. one of the clients. If you're a prolific author in a variety of genres, that's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. So there are some agency policies that are definitely worth exploring to find out if this is going to be a good fit for you and your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And back, yeah, back to the, how many clients does that agent have that also writes what you are? You could also potentially be waiting in line for those editors or those houses. So those yeah. are all things that I know some of those things I didn't think about until I experienced it. So talk mm -hmm. to your friends that are agented or have been agented, the good ones, the bad stories, all of it, learn from it, right? That's what a community does is we don't want each other Absolutely. to go through the pain and anguish that we have. And that's why we have to sometimes be vulnerable, but share those things so that we can help one another. And that's what 
critique partners and groups and wayward writers and communities are about is about sharing those experiences and asking for help and advice. So, but at the end of the day, it's your decision and you're going to have to live with it. Yes. Make your pro con list, whatever, however <laughs> you feel like works to make choices. But as much as you want to say yes to an offer on the call, I highly recommend not doing it, even if it feels like the match. Um, just take a minute to take a deep breath <laughs> and and sleep on it and, and think about it. So we're excited to hear about your agent calls and yes. all the successes out there. So good luck to you. And we hope you conquer your path with us.